I want to talk about demotivation and having a bad attitude and why even in the worst of circumstances, there's a way to find some sort of a good attitude. Now, it would be hard to compare my situation, even with severe OCD suffering, to maybe someone who was in Auschwitz. I was watching a documentary last night on the Auschwitz Museum. From a gratitude perspective, I would take OCD, double the intensity I ever had it, for the remainder of my life, even in a comfy hospital bed, than what those people went through. That is no joke. I would not want to be cattled somewhere and then murdered with my family. I mean, I can't even imagine. Um, those things really do bring me to tears, and uh, for obvious reasons. And motivation is handled so incorrectly on YouTube, in my opinion, and books. And I'm going to talk all about that in attitude and why it's so important to cultivate action before your body catches up. You can act in a good manner. You can act with a good attitude, even when you don't believe it, even when you feel like shit. You can do those things. And in time, that might shift that belief and your actual foundation for acting with a good attitude underneath your feet without you even fucking knowing it's happening. That's what's crazy about this. Before I go any further, please subscribe. Hit that like button down below. Phil at OCDrecovery.com. Remember, Phil is the man. We have to thank Phil. He does so much great work behind the scenes. He's the building department with Rob. He does all the webinars set up. He is amazing. Thank you so much, Phil. I don't give you enough praise. All I do is make fun of you because that's what we like to do from the East Coast. We just make fun of people. But no, we have, we have a lot of fun. Um, but just can't laugh, can't have a good attitude. It's hard to recover from OCD. So and then the webinars... 8.30 p.m. UK time, the webinar tonight, the, this video will come out and the webinar will be done. A hundred people, a hundred. Thank you so much to all of you. That is incredible. I am so grateful for all of you. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for coming. I hope they've been helpful. And I, I, I really, really, really do mean that. And then we have the webinars, the one-to-one -one services, which are very in-depth. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about motivation and inspiration. It's, it's complete bullshit. <laughs> it's not, it's not really anything, actually, when you think about it. I, I didn't even know what to say. I, I actually got stuck because how many people, including myself in my life, have been like, I'm motivated, I'm, in, I'm inspired, and I'm going to do something, and then they don't do anything. It's like when I follow people that go to big seminars, right? They're amazing. You'll learn a lot, life experiences. But if I followed most people after any seminar, economics, personal development, uh, attitude, most people don't change because that's only the doorway. You're opening the door. Then the door stays open and you walk the door and motivation and inspiration goes away. Now you're in this maze of a house and you're like, I'm not inspired or motivated to move any further. Well, you're going to have to teach yourself to move through discipline and habits and cultivating a, an attitude of, I'm going to keep a good attitude and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the job done, no matter what. It's not going to be easy and most people are not going to do it. And that goes for any venture in life. Mental health, relationships, making money, improving vulnerability, getting better at road rage, getting better at politics, religion, money discussions, all the things that inspire people to do these things, but then their emotions take over and they don't feel like doing it. And then, boo, see ya. How do I know this? Because I did this my whole life. And I said, there's something that we're missing as a society. I always talk about this big study I read when I was in my compulsive exercise phys researching phase about that my motivation, inspiration precedes discipline and habits and passion. I don't believe that for one second. I work with too many people. I'm too integrated with human um, habits on a day-to-day -day basis of seeing that it goes a little bit of motivation, probably discipline and habits, and then like real, if you want to call it real motivation and inspiration which isn't a sustained thing. You still have to keep up with the disciplines and the habits, but that's when you go, wow, I'm proud of the hard work. The initial burst of motivation and discipline gets people to the gym on January 3rd and makes them not go after January 20th. It's because we have this backwards. Now we're emotional creatures, what separates us from many other creatures, the ability to have compassion and empathy, which is incredible, but it comes to the detriment at times because compassion and empathy is amazing. You could do this, you got this, you're the best. But then there comes a point in time where you need someone to step in and say, this was great, but your, your, your behavioral traits are really fucking lazy. And that's okay. Um, it's good to hear that because I was extremely lazy behaviorally. 
gained a bunch of weight, smoked every day, abused adult websites, uh, played video games all day, didn't talk to my wife, uh, didn't have any conversations, I overspent my money. I mean, I, my habits were shit, but I was highly motivated. I think Jim Rohn says, what did he say? There's nothing worse than a highly motivated idiot. <laughs> Just such a great quote. And it's incredible because we really do believe this as a society at large. We really do believe that motivation and inspiration precedes massive change. They don't. They don't. When I get up every day in the morning and go to the gym and I look at the day and see what I have to do and my, my mission in life, okay, my number one mission in life is to change OCD and anxiety and mental health forever. That's what, you, you, it's hard to stop me. I, I mean, with the amount of content we do, the amount of one-to-ones, the webinars, I mean, we are a snowball spinning out of control because my whole mission is to help you, all of you, whoever you are, whatever you look like, wherever you're from, wherever your religious background, I work with people of all color, all shapes, all sizes, all countries, all over the world. My mission is to help you. I put you above myself in many ways um, because I want you to feel what I feel. I can't do that for you, but I want you to feel what that feels like to wake up every day, boom, let's go get it. I didn't do that. I wanted to off myself for a long, long, long time. So, and people look at me and they think, you are so motivated. You are so hyper. You are so energetic about life. No, I mean, yes, but, but no, I also have trained myself to do things that I absolutely fucking hate to do. I don't want to floss my teeth. I don't care. I don't, I'm just listening to my mom be like, Nicholas, brush your teeth. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So it's so important to realize that in order to make those changes, you are going to have to force yourself day in, day out, regardless of how you feel. And you're going to fail a lot. I had a long leg workout this morning. So I'm just like, you just feel like the de dehydration in my body. Um, but at least I don't work out with Ronnie Coleman did at Metroflex where it's like 120 degrees Fahrenheit in that gym because those guys were out of their minds. So always something to be grateful for in most cases. That's why mission trips are, are so important. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on going over um, to Asia in the next couple of years. And I'm very excited to talk to people that live in areas that might be very poor and all these things. They all add together. This all comes to where my motivation comes from. Seeing those things, gratitude, reading stories, reading books. I mean, reading stuff like this. It's a book I'm reading right now. Talent is overrated. This could be called motivation is overrated. It also could be called inspiration is overrated. It also could be called in order to be, be a long title, right? In order to achieve good things or the high probability of achieving, achieving good things, you need to look past motivation and get the job done day in, day out when no one's thanking you. Like a mother with four kids whose husband died in a motorcycle accident. You got no choice. I mean, you have a choice, but like, you know, the, the, the beneficial choice is to move through and push through. And that's how I live my life. And I didn't do that when I was going through OCD and anxiety recovery. I had a lot of excuses like we all do. Um, you know, I did everything in my power to find every excuse I could, which was a bad attitude. Let's talk about that. Everything we're talking about is attitude and, and discipline and habits, but let's talk about attitude. What do I do to cultivate a good attitude? These are all things I fucking sucked at. I'm terrible at all of them. Number one is when anyone says something to me that I don't agree with, I pause. Was it Seneca delay is the best response for anger? I pause, I think for a little bit. It took me about four years to get that one right. Many ups and downs. I think about the situation I'm in. I think about gratitude. I wake up every day and say three things I'm grateful for. And then I try my best to not complain at all. If I have a long day, if Erica interrupts me when I'm doing something and all that type of stuff, I, I just look at it in the sense of it's uncomfortable. I don't like being interrupted, but why is, there's no point in being in a bad mood about it. Why don't I keep a good attitude as best as I can in the face of all hardships, try and be happy. You can force, hap you can force being happy. You really can. Even, oh, excuse me. Even in the toughest of situations, it's not going to be easy, but you can do it. And the more you force yourself to do that, there's a high probability of that becoming an innate physiological, biological, whatever you want to say it and sound smart response. 
the primary response, that you look at things through gratitude and gratefulness and you keep a good attitude, no matter what your situation is. I would, you would have never known, like many people, we hide it very well. When I was going through OCD and anxiety recovery, I was like, no, you are going to keep a good attitude no matter what. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. I had to kind of squeeze this one in between some one-to-ones today. You can do it. You can you can force through with discipline, habits, change your perspectives, get rid of motivation and inspiration. If you feel it, it's great. Think about your ROCD. You're looking for love, all that stuff. Uh, you're looking for connection. Those things are all holding you back. Those things are great, but the more you look for it, the least likely you are to find it. And then you you just your feet are in the mud. So hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Phil at OCDrecovery.com. Thank him for all his hard work. Phil is a great guy, and we hope to see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day.